Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that does to stupidity what the Black Plague did to the population of Europe in the Middle Ages and what it could do again if anti-vaxxers get their way. Today we look at a flat earther whose arrogance exceeds most that I've come across, whose ignorance of actual science surpasses that of even clocking warrior Anthony Riley, and whose stupidity equals that of Daniel Pratt, a man who can't figure out how to get unchained from his water heater. Paul on the plane is a dumbass. I mean, that goes without saying, he is a flat earther after all. So grab a beer or make a cuppa and take a seat as I spend the next 20 minutes to show you why Paul on the plane and all flat earthers are idiots that really don't want to learn. Either that or they lack the capacity to. Look, flat earthers are fucking idiots. You all know this by now. This is episode 31 of Flurfs Are Idiots and I apologize in advance for the loss of brain cells that will occur whilst you watch this video. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> Welcome back once again, this is great the bottom of the barrel of human intelligence and show you why drinking lead paint is probably not a good idea. Paul on the plane is stupid, like real stupid. So let's have some fun pointing out why. I'm gonna start with a video that he titled Flat Earth in 60 Seconds, then have a look at his award-winning series, Faking Space. I'm gonna make a prediction that Paul on the plane's channel will be full of the usual idiotic flat earth points that have been debunked a thousand times before. So let's have some fun and play a game. Flat Earth Bingo. I've got my card and you guys can get yours by clicking on the link in the description so you can play along at home. Let's do this. Further back than any of us can realize, we are told we live on a globe, a spinning, orbiting, corkscrewing water pair hurtling through space at more than a million miles an hour. Well, off to a good start, eh? Seven seconds in and I've marked off two. You idiots love to throw around that pear-shaped thing, don't you? Man, if I ever speak to Neil deGrasse Tyson, I'm gonna have some words with him about saying that. But the thing is, he is technically right. A pear is wider at the bottom, and so is our Earth. It's just that the oblateness is so slight that you can't even see it. Look at these two circles. Both look like perfect circles, right? Well, this one is slightly wider at the bottom, but you couldn't tell, could you? The same as the Earth. And it's not like this only happens to the Earth either, because Saturn is obviously oblate, and if you look through a decent telescope, you can see it for yourself. Did you know that's just a story? Let's address the facts. Water always finds and maintains its level. 70% of the Earth is water. So where exactly does this curve begin? The world's lighthouses, railroads, bridges, they all fail the curvature test. Why can we see much further than the globe curvature math dictates? Oh, there's another two already. Okay, well, first of all, look at that picture of Lake Michigan. Why can't you see those buildings all the time? A and also, where's the bottoms of those buildings? Is there a flood and everyone's drowning? No. The bottoms of those buildings are being hidden by the curve of the earth and refraction is lifting up the tops to make them visible in this rare instance. And water, I don't know how many times I have to say this, but water doesn't find its level. Water doesn't really do anything. It's not got an intelligence, you know, just like flat earthers. Water will simply conform to the forces that are acting on it. And because there's a force pushing down on the water on earth, it will always flow to the point of lowest potential energy. What force is that? I hear the collective voices of all flurfs shouting. Desert file? Gravity, you fucking retard! Gravity! Have you ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity! Gravity! Did you know that every experiment to prove the Earth is moving has failed? Every. Plume and heck, they're coming thick and fast, eh? Um, Bob? If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. Did you know that gravity is just a theory that's never been proven? When was the last time you observed water conforming to the outside of its container or sticking to a spinning ball? Shit, shit, slow down, dude. It's, it's like you've tried to condense all of the stupid in the world into just one short video. Right, so that was water on a spinning ball and gravity is only a th Gravity is only a theory. No! Have you ever heard of the law of gravitational attraction? Gravity isn't only a theory, it's a fact. It's real and governs most of the physics as we know it. 
There is the scientific theory of gravity, which is the corroborating evidence of gravity that backs up what we already know. Man, 30 seconds in and I've nearly got bingo. I didn't really think this through, did I? Never underestimate the stupidity of flat earthers, because they're all fucking idiots, ding. Pictures from space? NASA intentionally distorts reality using fisheye lenses and openly admit the pictures of the Earth are CGI composites. And all amateur high-altitude balloon footage reveals no curve. Another three, right, fisheye lens, NASA CGI, and Photoshop, because it has to be. So, Paul, you've just straight up lied there. NASA said that one picture was photoshopped because it has to be. There are hundreds, no, thousands, probably millions of pictures from space that aren't photoshopped. But you guys don't even understand how cameras work, do you? If the Earth is spinning, orbiting, soaring through space, how come the constellations have not changed in thousands of years? A simple Google search will ruin that claim, but for you flat earthers that don't have the most basic of research skills, I've included a link in the description to MC Toon's website page that has the nautical almanacs that have shown the positions of stars moving and needing to be constantly updated so that sailors, you know, didn't get lost and stuff. Did you know that airplanes climb to their cruising altitude, level off, and then descend to their destination and do not adjust for the Earth's alleged curvature or motion? Not even finished the video, and I've got bingo. Get in. Didn't take long, did it? Let's let him finish. Compasses and gyroscopes don't even work on a globe. You've been duped. Compasses and gyros don't work on a globe. Did you actually just say that, Paul? Really? Look, just go to the remedial classroom, please. Right, you bunch of ass hats, sit down and shut up. Oh, what is it, Mr. Riley? Your coursework. Ah, oh, yes, yes, we marked it. Um, how do we say this? You didn't only fail, but you gave the entire faculty a massive laugh. The headmaster had to be taken away in an ambulance because he actually passed out from laughing so much, and the lunch lady wet herself when we showed her. I tend to get the odd, my dog ate my homework, when you morons are supposed to hand in work, but I have to ask, did your dog write this? Where was the title page? The table of contents? The punctuation and spelling were so bad that you made JM Truth seem like a genius, and that was something no one thought was possible. I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul. Now, Paul, welcome to the class. You say compasses and gyros wouldn't work on the globe. Well, you're a fucking moron. A compass works by following the lines of Earth's magnetic field. And did you know that compasses built for use in the Northern Hemisphere won't work in the South and vice versa? Yeah, that's because we're on a globe. They wouldn't work if the Earth was flat because there's no reason a flat stationary Earth would have a magnetic field in the first place. And gyros? Again, they only work because the Earth is a globe. Take an interferometric fiber optic gyro for instance. They use the Sagnac effect to measure the rotation of the Earth and are so precise that planes have three to measure your pitch and roll. And if left on the ground, they will pick up a drift. Anyone know how much drift? Oh, Bob? A 15 degree per hour drift. Thank you, Bob. So you were wrong on both accounts, Paul. Now, everyone get out, and your homework for tonight is to try not to swallow your tongues by accident. Right, thanks for that, teacher. Back to Paul on the plane. Now, one of the main things that Paul is known for is his series, Faking Space, where he analyzes over 10,000 hours of research. Translation, he watched a bunch of YouTube videos. Not that that's a bad thing. This is a YouTube channel, and I give you facts every time I do a video. But let's take a look at one video he did where he tries to discredit the Apollo landings using logic and common sense. Oh my God, I hate myself using air quotes, I'm sorry. The most damaging evidence as we've been showing throughout this series is the wet flag on Apollo 17. A wet flag. So NASA are such a smart organization that they can fool the entire world into thinking the earth isn't flat and that we did go to the moon, but also stupid enough to leave little clues like a wet flag in their photos and videos. Anyway, Stanley Kubrick was such a perfectionist that you think he would have allowed that into his production? Oh, sorry, I did it again. Let's have a little bit more of a listen. The prop was either rained on or had accumulated morning dew, much like the water on the equipment and EVA suits we provided the evidence for in our previous videos. If you think moisture or water in these photos could happen on the moon, Go research what happens to water in a vacuum. Okay, this one is easy. That's not water, it's a shadow. First of all, what if it was water? Well, then it's drying the wrong way. The image shows bands that are darker down the middle of the folds, and that wouldn't be the case because 
Round the edges where there's seams and more material is where it would hold more moisture, meaning that that would dry slower than the rest of it. Secondly, this particular flag was the flag that had been hanging in the Apollo mission control in Houston. So we know the composition was of a nylon type material. Putting this particular flag on the moon was a symbolic gesture. Nylon is a highly reflective material and I did a quick search for some nylon USA flags. And how about you guys see if you can spot the wet patches? Oh God, I did it again, I'm sorry. For a more in-depth look at that particular claim, check out the Casual Spaceman's channel in the link up there. Speaking of rocks, this is an example of how some of the rocks were made for the moon set. One of the features this rock has is its color, unlike the other rocks in the photos. The wire mesh is covered with a plaster type coating. It didn't turn out well for NASA, so there's only a few of these rocks and only in Apollo 15 do the rocks look like this. Or it's just more shadows on the rocks. You think if they were gonna fake rocks on the moon that they would make fake ones? Or, I don't know, use rocks from a quarry or something? Fuck me, you're grasping at straws, huh? The prop rock exteriors were coated to make them appear to be real rocks. This rock was turned over to reveal how it was formed. It appears to have a lunar dust coating. The dust can be scraped away as pointed out here with the tool. A real rock would need to be split open to reveal a flat surface. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? Yeah, I, I might have misheard you there, but did you just say that a rock would have to be split open to reveal a flat surface? That's just stupid. Examples of how rocks were produced for the set. Remember, the many automotive parts in our previous videos? They look like real rocks, but objects such as automotive parts may be found inside. The one above appears to be like an ignition coil. Note the steel band, A, wrapped around the case with square nuts, B, facing the camera. So they just decided to chuck some engine parts in the rocks and cover it with plaster. Do you really think that Stanley Kubrick would have allowed that sloppy kind of work? Come on, this is actually getting ridiculous. This very distinctive rock has been used in more than one mission, indicating that the same location was used to stage the Apollo moon landings. If you don't immediately recognize the distinctive folds on the corners of this rock, it's the Prop C rock found in Apollo 16. And that Prop C rock has been debunked a thousand times already. If you look at the original NASA images, that C isn't there, meaning it's clearly an artifact from copying the picture, or more likely, a loose hair that got in there. GC. NASA has tried to get rid of the C prop rock, but it's not the only one with lettering on it. This bag is from a golf course. The GC on the bottom means that this is a rental golf bag. Perhaps Major Tom was using it on the moon, and then the GC would stand for ground control. This one will open NASA's eyes. I hope their eyelashes don't start falling out. A golf bag. You think that's a golf bag? Let's compare, shall we? This is a golf bag. And this is the rock from the moon. I mean... You conspiracy nutbacks to say anything, huh? The grasping tongs are carefully placed so the shadow makes an arrow. The white glove with rubber tips is at the end of the arrow. To the left of that glove are many more gloves with the fingers sticking straight out of this dirt pile. The astronauts must have had fun staging this. Gloves? What the fuck are you even on about? What gloves? Look, you don't need to keep grasping at straws. Here's some. Easily taken to be a small rock in the background, this close-up reveals it contains what appears to be an upper part of a half-buried Labatt beer can. 
This Canadian Labatt label design is a very close match to the one in the 1970s photo. The LEM landing gear were built by Hero Aerospace of Quebec, Canada. The crews that worked on building and dressing these sets really were whistleblowers. What? It doesn't even look like a beer can. And that label does... Oh, I'm sorry. That label design is clearly just a shadow on the rock. Seriously, guys, that's all the stupid that I can take for today. It's clear that Paul on the plane will see whatever he wants to see to believe that the moon landings were fake and that the Earth is flat. But that's because Paul on the plane, like all flat earthers, is a fucking idiot. Now, just before I go, I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons. Your support allows me time to focus on my channel and do what's important, bringing you great content and fighting the flat earth. I want to say an extra massive thank you to my $200 patrons, Christopher Kane and Jeffrey Sloan. If you'd like to join and become part of the FTFE team, go to patreon.com forward slash FTFE. And thank you. Thanks for watching and making it to the end of this massive display of confirmation bias and stupidity. If you've enjoyed this, then please leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already, and hit the notification bell so you never miss anything from FTFE. Make sure you check out the Casual Spaceman's channel with the link in the description. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat. 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 Fight the flat.